Welcome to Electron Online, where here's our second video talking about different names of angles. I left the same initial information near the top that I had on the previous video, but here's some new information. Here we have an angle drawn, and notice that there's what we call the interior of the angle, which is between the two sides, and then there's the region on the other side of the two sides, which is called the exterior region of an angle. So we have the interior of an angle and the exterior of an angle on the other side. Here, notice that when we have two angles and the sum of their measures adds up to 180 degrees, we call them supplementary angles. They're also called a linear pair of angles because the two angles here, side by side, can be drawn next to a line and so therefore they're called a linear pair of angles. In geometry, sometimes we have different names to express the same concept. Here's one example of that. Also, we need to be able to measure angles and have a symbol to indicate that we've measured the size of the angle. So the measure of an angle can be expressed like this. We put a small m in front, we then we have the angle symbol, and then the indication which angle we're talking about. So we can have it as the measure of the angle ABC, Notice again, A is the far end of the side, B is the vertex, C is the far end of the other side. So we're indicating that we're talking about this angle here, or we can simply label it with a number or letter. And so we can have the measure of angle one or the measure of angle ABC. For example, if it's 30 degrees, then we write the measure of the angle ABC equals 30 degrees. It could also be measured in radians. Now let's talk about the word congruent. I always felt that congruent was kind of a strange word, but what it means is that the angles are very similar. With other words, they can have what we call the same angle measure, but could have a different orientation. So in all cases, when angles are congruent, they definitely must have the same angle measure. Let's say they both have an angle measure of 30 degrees, but one can be oriented in one direction and the other can be oriented in the other direction. They're still congruent as we call them. So when you hear the word congruent, they have the same angle measure, but could be oriented differently. The word could is important because that also means that they could be oriented in the exact same way and we still call them congruent. The symbol we use for that is an equal sign with a little squiggly line on top. So here we can say that angle one is congruent to angle three. Also now let's talk about what we call the angle bisector. Here we have an angle and let's say that the angle had an angular measure of 36 degrees. Now we draw a line where it connects to the vertex of the angle and the angular measure on either side of the line is exactly the same, 18 degrees and 18 degrees. An angle bisector divides an angle into exactly, I just added the word exactly, two equal sides. Of course, I don't have to say the word exactly, but that's what it means. An angle bisector divides an angle in two equal sides. And finally, we have two types of angles. Here we've drawn a triangle and we're talking about this angle right here. We can call this angular measure here or this angle here the interior angle. But then if we imagine that the line here, the base of the triangle, we'll talk about that later, when the base of the triangle is drawn continuously like this with a dashed line, and then we draw a symbol here where we have a rotation from that line to this line, we call this the exterior angle relative to this. So this is called the interior angle, and this is called the exterior angle. In this particular case, when you add them together, that up to 180 degrees, which means that here the interior angle and the exterior angle are supplementary angles. So now you have quite a repertoire of words related to angles. We're going to need one more video to talk about some additional words used in conjunction with angles. So I'm going to erase all this now and show you something else now, again, regarding to angles. And at that point, you should be ready to meet up with any kind of vocabulary in your geometry book that talks about angles and you'll understand what they're talking about and that's how we do that.